Hey everyone, Dylan here from All You Can Board and today I am here to talk to you about the newest expansion for what I consider to be the best solely two player board game, which I know is high praise, but I think it deserves it. I'm talking about obviously Seven Wonders Duel and the newest expansion is Seven Wonders Duel Agora. Now Agora uh, is Greek and it refers to, I think it translates to an assembly. It's basically talking about the Senate. So it's, a, it's the political landscape is the newest addition to, to Seven Wonders Duel. Um, I know the word Agora in, in Portuguese. It actually translates to now, um, which is uh, I think appropriate because you should go buy this right now because Seven Wonders Duel is already a great game and this just expands it and adds a bunch of really neat things to it. So like I said, this is the newest expansion. The previous one was Pantheon and I'm going to give you a full overview of everything that this one brings to the table. Then I'm going to go over a full tutorial of all the rules and everything you need to know to expand Seven Wonders Duel and play. The one thing I will mention is that I'm not going to go over the rules for the original Seven Wonders Duel. So this is, um, you know, keep in mind that you already know those rules. So if you don't, I would go look up a video or go read uh, a PDF online, learn the rules of the original. But I imagine that if you're here, you probably have either played the original, own it, and are looking to expand it. So I will just be focusing on the rules for Agora. So let's jump right into it. Okay, so a quick overview of just some of the new things it adds in. I'll get into the rules for these in the next section, but just so you'll have a little bit of uh, understanding of what to expect. Um, so they add a new board that attaches to your main board from Seven Wonders Duel. That's the Senate board. So this is the big new addition. There's different chambers in the, sen in the Senate, um, and each section is uh, it has two sections of the chamber. So there's the the left side of the of the Senate board, the center, and the right. Each one has two chambers, and cards that come up will reference specific sides, and you're basically fighting for influence influence on this board, which leads to the fact that there is now a new victory condition. So we had scientific and military, and then obviously just if neither one of those is achieved, whoever has the most points at the end of the game, there's now another way the game can end prior to the game actually uh, playing out all the way through, and that is political supremacy victory. So that comes with uh, into play based on the control of the Senate. So if you have the most influence in a section, a chamber of the Senate board, you're considered to have control of that section of the Senate. Um, if you have control of all six sections of the Senate, you win by political supremacy. So that's it's pretty cool and adds a whole new twist, another thing you have to consider, another thing you're balancing to try to win the game or making sure your opponent doesn't steal the game out from under you. That's the, uh, the, the big addition. The other big addition is a brand new type of card that will be in the actual display that you can purchase from. And these are Senator cards and they come in two different types. There are the white ones that are the politicians and there are the black ones that are the conspirators. So these will uh, be shuffled in at the start of the game into each age you'll have a different amount of senators um, in each age um, they'll get dealt, dealt out randomly just like regular building cards are or guild cards are um, around the plane area um, and you'll be taking them buying them and putting them into your supply much like you do with all other cards they'll just have a different impact and they'll be specifically influencing the senate uh, board so i'll get into that in the rules but just so you know there is a brand new card type that you're going to be managing which is pretty exciting next up there's a brand new type of card and it's actually a full-sized card um, much like the the wonders that's uh, not the little tiny ones these are the conspiracy cards there's a whole bunch of different conspiracy cards in here um, and they are going to come into play uh, with the conspirators that are in the deck and they're going to give you a whole wide range of really cool and powerful effects that you'll have at your disposal um, you're going to be triggering them much in the same way you do wonders where you have to take a card from the display and slide it under the wonder to claim that wonder and build it you're going to be doing that uh, exactly the same with the conspiracy cards it's going to cost you a card from the display uh, but they don't actually have an additional cost with coins or anything like that on top of it so you're just taking a card from the display in order to uh, ready the conspiracy card again i'll get into the rules of those later but just to give you a little bit of an idea of some of the new additions to the game another small change is that the military tokens that are on the, the board of the original seven wonders duel are being replaced with new versions um, only when you play with the expansion um, so normally there was these tokens and when you push the military marker past a certain point the tokens would then remove uh, from the board and you would this would cause your opponent to lose a certain amount of coins uh, these are being replaced with uh Basically, it's, a, it's the same function, but instead of coins, it's with the new influence cube. So these new influence cubes are how you determine who has control of different chambers in the Senate. Um, these new tokens are going to basically add to uh, cubes to your own Senate board or your own chambers or remove them from your opponents. So it's just a way to uh, push the influence and it uh, you know makes things a little tight, tighter when you're playing with Agora that the military area also affects the Senate, which is pretty cool. And then of course, you're gonna get a couple new wonders just like you did in Pantheon. You're also gonna get a couple new science tokens just like you did in Pantheon. So you got a couple more things to add into your collection. But again, these can only be used when you play with the expansion. If you're not playing with the expansion or just playing the base game, 
these won't be able to be used. Uh, but if you are, you get some more uh, options when you're shuffling those in at the start of the game. And that is basically an overview of all the new uh, components that come in the expansion. Again, you're just gonna be fighting for control of the Senate using the inf influence cubes, which you're adding and moving and uh, taking off the board in a variety of ways um, to try to have control of different chambers. When you have control of a chamber, the decree that's on that chamber as a special ability, you're gonna have access to that special ability. It's like an ongoing effect uh, for whoever's in control of that chamber. So there's gonna be benefits in that way. But again, if you control all, all chambers at once, you're gonna win via political supremacy. So that's an overview. Let's get into the actual tutorial of how to play. To set up the new expansion, place the new Senate board underneath the base game board. Before you prepare the original age cards, take all the new Senator cards and shuffle them. Prepare each age deck from 1 to 3 as you would in the base game, but then randomly add in 5 Senator cards in age 1, 5 Senator cards in age 2, and 3 Senator cards in age 3. Now shuffle each age deck separately and prepare the card structure for age 1. Shuffle all the decree tokens and then randomly place six of them on each decree zone of the Senate board. Check the symbol at the bottom of the decree zone to know whether this decree token goes face up or face down. This icon means face up and this icon means face down. Shuffle all the conspiracy cards together to form a deck and make sure to use the new military tokens rather than the ones in the base game. Give each player 12 influence cubes of a single color. And finally, shuffle the progress tokens and wonder cards and distribute them as you would in the base game. And that's it, now you're ready to play the new expansion, Agora. So the first new aspect of Agora that I'm gonna go over are the Senator cards. So the Senator cards, the way you acquire them is very similar, pretty much identical to the building cards that are already on, uh, in the display that you're familiar with from the base game. Uh, these cards will be in the display, either face down or face up, and when they're face up uh, and uncovered, you are able to acquire them. Um, you Instead of acquiring them, you can discard them for coins, just like you can with building cards, and you can also use them to build wonders, just like you can with building cards. If you choose to recruit them, you're gonna pay the cost on them just like you would with building cards the only difference is that all the cost areas for all these cards are just going to be a coin symbol with a little s in it what that means is that the cost of each of these cards is equivalent to how many senators you already have so the first one you acquire will be zero because you won't have any yet after that your next one will cost one and then two and so on so the cost co continually goes up the more you acquire so it becomes harder and harder to acquire them or more expensive to acquire them as you go on there are two types of senator cards. The white cards are politicians and the black cards are conspirators. Let's start with politicians first and then I'll move on to conspirators after that. So when you recruit a politician from the display, you will gain an amount of actions that is based on how many blue cards you have. If you have zero or one blue cards in your city, you will get one senate action. If you have two to three blue cards in your city, you will get two senate actions. And finally, if you have four or more blue cards in your city, you will get three Senate actions. There are two different types of Senate actions, either placing influence or moving influence. And depending on how many actions you have when you recruit a Senator, based on, of course, the blue cards in your city, you can use any mix of those actions that you want. So for instance, if I had four, uh, three actions because I had four blue cards in my city, I could do uh, all three placing influence, I could do all three moving influence, I could do two placing, one movement, it's up to me how I choose to, to delegate them, but again, you get a number of actions depending on how many blue cards you have in your city. If you choose to place influence, look at the top of the politician card that you recruited. The symbol shown here will determine in which chambers you are allowed to place this influence. This symbol means the left, this symbol means the middle, and this symbol means the right. Left means you can place in either of these two chambers on the Senate board. Middle means you can place on either of these two chambers on the Senate board. And right means you can place in either of these two chambers on the Senate board. To place the influence, simply take one of your influence cubes and place it in the chamber of your choice. If you place an influence cube on a chamber that has a face down decree, now flip this face up to reveal its effect. If you choose the action to move influence, simply move one of your influence cubes that is already on the Senate board to an adjacent chamber. A couple quick clarifications to keep in mind, there is no limit to the amount of influence you can have on a particular chamber. That's completely up to you and what your strategy is. Um, keep in mind, you only have 12 influence cubes. If you run out of those cubes, you can no longer take the place influence action. You would only be able to take the move because obviously you have uh, no cubes uh, outside the board. Um, also, if you take multiple actions because you have uh, enough blue cards, 
from based on one senator card that you recruit, um, you can place them in either one of the chambers that are in the section that's listed at the top of the senator card. So if it was listed uh, as the middle icon on the senator card and you could place three cubes, the two chambers that are part of that middle section, you can place on either one of them and, and alternate. You don't have to put all three on the same one, for instance. If instead of a politician, you recruit a conspirator, you can take only one of the following actions. You can either place influence, which means take one of your influence cubes and put it on any chamber in the entire Senate board of your choice, or you can choose to conspire. If you conspire, draw two conspiracy cards from the conspiracy deck. Look at them and choose one to place face down in front of you, and the other one can go on either the top or the bottom of the deck. Remember, when you recruit a conspirator specifically, you can only take one of these actions, either place influence or conspire. So if you've recruited a conspirator and choose to conspire um, and hit you nav one of these new fancy conspiracy cards face down in front of you, you're probably wondering how you flip it face up and actually trigger its ability. To do that, you have to prepare the conspiracy. To do that is very much the same way that you uh, complete your wonders. You're just going to take a card from the display and slide it underneath the conspiracy card. The difference here is that wonders have a cost to them and resources. Conspiracy cards to prepare them have no cost. You're just taking a card from the display, sliding it, sliding it underneath, and you, it is now prepared. The only difference here is that the ability does not trigger immediately. So in order to turn it face up, you have to trigger the conspiracy. You can only do that at the start of your turn. So after you've prepared your conspiracy as the action for your turn, you'll have to wait till, till your next turn to actually flip it face up and trigger it. Now the abilities on these cards are really powerful and there's a whole variety of them. I will go over some of them and give you an examples of what to, what to expect, but we'll do that a little bit later on. So for now, we'll just leave it at the, the explanation and I'll come back to that after. The next new game mechanic we'll go over is controlling chambers on the Senate board. So this is a big one. Um, it's very simple. If you, you are in control of a chamber, if you have more influence cubes than your opponent on that chamber. If you do, you will move one of your influence cubes onto the control zone of that chamber to show that you have control of it. The cube that you move to the control zone on this chamber is still considered to be a part of this chamber. It's just being used as well to show who has control. Whoever has control of a chamber gains the benefit from the decree that is associated with that chamber. The decree tokens have a variety of different effects, just like the conspiracy cards, and I will go over those in just a bit. Uh, the only other thing to note is that in the case of a tie for a control on any of the chambers, no one gets the effect of the decree. You have to actually have someone have more than the other for that to take effect. And the last new game mechanic is a new way to win the game, which is political supremacy. In order to win via political supremacy, you have to control all six chambers of the Senate at the same time. And that's basically all the new rules of Agora, aside from the fact that there are some new abilities that you'll never have seen before uh, that'll show up on the conspiracy cards, as well as the senator cards and the decree tokens. I'm gonna go over a couple of them as an example so you can get a feel for the iconography, and I'll let you discover the rest for yourself. The rulebook does a great job of laying them all out for you. And just like the base game app, over time, you'll just come to recognize what the iconography is and get used to them. If you ever see this symbol, it means you get to place one influence cube in the chamber of your choice. Alternatively, this symbol means you can move one of your already placed influence cubes to an adjacent chamber. And of course, this icon means you can remove one of your opponent's influence cubes of your choice from the Senate board. You may come across these new icons, which mean that anytime you or your opponent constructs a card of this color, you will take an amount of coins from the bank that is equal to the current age you are on, either one, two, or three. This symbol means when you are determining the number of Senate actions you have when you recruit a politician, you can add two to the total number of blue cards you have. This symbol will be familiar to you, but means when you are recruiting a conspirator, you may immediately take another turn. This is an interesting new icon that means you can take one building card that's covered at the end of the structure and build it for free. Senator cards can't be chosen though. There's a whole bunch of new iconography and different abilities that weren't in the base game that I, I can't go over them all, but there's a lot of cool stuff in there. There's uh, ways to uh, destroy your opponent's blue and yellow buildings in their display, which we normally hadn't had before. We only had gray and brown. You can also steal buildings from your opponent's display. There's a way that you can actually uh, take one of the age cards that was left out of the game when you built the ages at the at the start of the game. You can take one of the ones that's in the box and add it to your display. There's a whole bunch of cool stuff in there. I will let you discover that for yourself in the rule book. It does a great job of laying it all up for you, but just know that they did not uh, 
hesitates to add in a whole bunch of new abilities. There's tons of cool stuff in there. You're going to be having some wild games uh, when you include the Agora expansion. And that's it. That's my whole overview and tutorial on Agora, the new expansion for Seven Wonders Duel. If you like this video, if it helped you uh, get this new expansion to the table just a little bit quicker, consider leaving a like, a comment, subscribing it. That goes a long way to helping out the channel. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.